Hi guys, this is Shalin. So today we are going to discuss about a dynamic programming problem on Spodge, which is called uh, Martian. Uh, I'll just explain the problem statement very briefly, and for more detailed description, you can look down at the link. <clears throat> so this is the problem statement. We are given a grid of size n cross m, which means we have n rows and n columns. Uh, each cell of the grid contains two values x and y of which x represents the amount of mineral of type A and y represents the amount of mineral of type B. Uh, on the topmost end of this grid we have a mine of mineral B and uh, on the leftmost end of this grid we have a mine of mineral A. Uh, our task is alright. So also in each cell, we can have uh, two different types of conveyor belts. Uh, the first one can be the one going from bottom to top and the second one can be the one going from right to left. Uh, each cell can have only one of these two different types of conveyor belts. Uh, so our task is basically to uh, take the minerals from each of the cells to the respective mines. Uh, notice the word respective here. Uh, so basically you need to take mineral A to its mine and mineral B to its mine. Uh, so the objective of the problem here is <clears throat> to uh, supply these minerals to their respective mines. Mineral A to mine A, mineral B to mine B in such a way that the quantity of minerals supplied is the maximum. So for example, let's say uh, capital X is the amount of mineral A supplied to mine A and capital Y is the amount of mineral B. So you need to find, you need to find a solution such that uh, the amount of mineral supplied is maximum. So you uh, so you need to basically find max of x plus y. Uh, now as I said before that we have two different types of conveyor belts. Uh, each cell can have only one type of the belt. Uh, so basically you cannot have both the types of conveyor belts in the same cell. Uh, plus also note that two conveyor belts of the same type in adjacent cells can be connected to each other. So for example uh, let's say you have a conveyor belt from right to left in this cell and you have a conveyor belt from again from right to left in the cell next to it. Then these two cells, these two conveyor belts can be connected. So let's say this conveyor belt takes the amount of mineral fi amount 5 and this one takes 4. So at this point of ta in time you will have total 5 plus 4 which is 9. Uh, another point to note here in the question is that uh, to con if you take a turn then the, con then the amount of minerals you were carrying before will be lost. So for example what I mean by this is let's say you were carrying 5 minerals here and at this cell you decide that you want to take a left turn. And you're carrying three minerals here then this five minerals will be lost forever so you won't be able to take these five minerals to B. Alright so let's move on to the solution now uh, let's call this cell M let's call the last row R let's call the last column C uh, so I'm gonna make a claim here the claim is that that X and Y the amount of minerals which is X and Y contained in the cell M both of them won't go unused. In other words, at least one of X and Y will reach their respective mines. Uh, so we are going to prove this claim by a contradiction. The contradictory statement of our claim would be uh, both X and Y which were present in this last cell go unused. Uh, which is possible when you start from here, you take, you start from here, take a conveyor belt put x amount in that and move forward but at some point as this x has to go unused there is going to be one cell 
in this last row which contains a conveyor belt pointing towards the north which basically means that all the uh, mineral all the amount of mineral that you had uh, gathered up till this point have been lost now similarly uh, all right so as this conveyor belt is pointing upwards we are assuming that this will reach its destination which means that x amount we had gathered here is lost similarly if you start taking y towards its mine uh, then then and for it to be lost there is going to be one cell in this last column number 5 which there is going to be one cell which will contain a conveyor belt pointing towards the left uh, this basically means that there, there is going to be one cell in the entire grid which will contain conveyor belts of both the types which in itself is a contradiction because our problem statement clearly defines that uh, one cell cannot have two different types of conveyor belts so uh, we just proved our claim by contradiction by now it should be clear that this cell which contains x and y amount of minerals either one of these minerals are going to reach their specified destination uh, which means that either this last cell let's call it m is going to be connected to this refinery by a conveyor belt or it's going to be connected to the topmost refinery by a series of conveyor belts all right so let's jump on to the solution now uh, let's take two cases by now as it's pretty clear that this last cell spindles will either reach the top or they will reach the left end uh, case one will be this uh, the minerals from the last cell reaches the top which means that now we are left with now our problem space is reduced from n cross m rows to n cross m grid to n rows and m minus 1 columns uh, assume that we have a function f which takes in the number of rows n and the number of row columns m and it gives us the uh, desired answer to our problem uh, if we have this function then the expression that we can write is f of n cross m is equal to f of n comma m minus 1 plus the amount of minerals that we have gathered from the last column let's for now let's call it capital x this will be the solution for case 1 now case 2 case 2 will be when uh, you gather minerals from the last row which means that now our problem space is reduced from n cross m grid to n minus 1 cross m grid which means that we can write the expression as f of n comma m is equal to f of n minus 1 comma m plus let's call the minerals gathered from the last row as y this is basically our uh, solution to the problem so by now this solution is pretty clear uh, all that is left to calculate is x and y so x is basically the sum of this last column and y is the sum of this last row but uh, mind you that when we calculate x we need to take in the sum of the minerals that will reach that has to reach here and when we calculate y we need to take the sum of minerals uh, that need to reach the west end so the way we are going to calculate x and y is by using prefix sums let me give you a very brief uh, explanation about prefix sums let's say you have an array 3 4 1 5 2 of size 5 now prefix sum what it does is it takes in the cumulative sums of previous values so let's say we have a prefix array the first 
value will be 3. The second value will be 4 plus the value next to it, which is 3, which means it's 7. The third value will be 7 plus 1, 8. Fourth value will be 8 plus 5 is 13. And the last one will be 15. So this is a very brief explanation of prefix sums. Uh, though in this particular problem, we are going to need a 2D prefix sum. So let's say that row i of j gives us the prefix sum of the values in row i up till the jth element. Uh, in recursive terms, if you want to write it, we can write it like this. Row i of row of i comma j is equal to row of i comma j minus 1 plus the value at i comma j. So we'll also have to calculate prefix values for the columns. So uh, let's say that column j comma i denotes the prefix sums in the column j up till the i row. So mind you that I have inverted these two variables i and j just for ease because normally in competitive programming problems we uh, take i as the row index and j as the column index. So this expression for prefix sum of columns can be written as column of j comma i is equal to column of j comma i minus 1 plus the value at the index i comma j. But there's a catch here. Uh, each cell contains two values. So in the in the row case, in the row case, you're gonna take the value one, and in the column case, you're gonna take the value two. Now value one uh, is the quantity of mineral in cell i comma j, which goes towards the leftmost mineral and the leftmost mine, and value two is the amount of mineral that goes to the topmost mine. Uh, so now that we have these expressions in hand, we can easily calculate x and y. So for example, uh, let's say that our grid size is n cross m and we are calculating and for this expression, for this particular expression, the value of x and y would be, uh, so the value of x would be the sum of all the values in the last column, which is, uh, which is column number m. So, what we are going to take, the value of x in this case is going to be column of m up till the ith row. In our case, i is n because we are going to take the sum up till the nth row. So, column of m, comma n is going to be the value of x for this particular expression. Similarly, the value of y is going to be the sum of all the values in the last row, which means row of n up till j. Uh, we need to take the sum up till the last column which is m. Now that we have this expression in hand, we can easily form a dynamic programming solution for this. So let's just uh, jump to the pseudocode now. So this is the pseudocode of our pre-discussed solution. Uh, this function takes in two parameters, n and m. Uh, all you need to do is initialize your uh, array with this array dp with the size n cross m, which is basically the size of the grid, with values minus one, so that you can know whether a particular state i comma j has been processed or not. Uh, when you call this function, this is the base case here, uh, which says that if n is equal to zero or m is equal to zero, you return zero which basically means that you have actually traversed the entire grid right starting right from n comma m and you are now exceeding the limits which means you need to return zero here now uh, there's an if condition which says if dp of n comma m is not equal to minus one which means that this particular state n cross n comma m has already been processed so you don't need to process it again you can just return the value stored for this particular state. The next statement is the one we already discussed before, uh, which is, which defines the state of the dp. And uh, once you calculate uh, dp of n comma m, you have to return it. Mind you that 
while calculating this, you need to store this particular value in this particular array so that the next time when you come to this state, you can actually return it without, uh, without computing it again, thus saving the time complexity. So we've solved this problem using a top-down dynamic programming approach. And uh, as you can see, this was a very interesting problem. If you have a bottom-up solution for this, using dynamic programming, then please paste your code in the comments below. Uh, if you have any doubts, suggestions or feedback, you can paste your comment below. And uh, the next video is going to be out very soon. Bye-bye.